Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to the next segment of my journey with Kado called New Enemies, Gliding, and a Health Bar, which is, you know, you can probably guess in the next What's New segment, <laughs> it's going to be a new enemy, a gliding mechanic, and a health bar, funnily enough. I've also rechanged some of the new block designs, which I'm excited to show you guys. Uh, not as much progress as I have had in the last couple of weeks. Um, I've had a lot of things to sidetrack me, but I'm glad with the progress I'm making. It's still steady and we're still getting there, which is lovely. But before I kick into the game and show you what I've done, it's good do trivia time again. Our question for the day is, what is the coding language for Godot? Drumroll, please. It's GD Script which is very similar to uh, Python in the, its format for syntaxes. If you knew that, give yourself a pat on the back. Anyway, let's jump right on in to the actual gameplay and showing off the new features and everything, guys. So here is what we've got so far for you guys. We have our little Hattie, as we, as we know. Um, we've added in... A very enjoyable enemy here, who fires his little slime balls, or shadow balls. We haven't updated what the enemy looks like, he's just the uh, the normal slime that came with the game textures. We'll change him eventually. We've also got our little health bar up in the corner here, and we have the glide function. So if now if we hold the, the space bar, we'll now float downward slowly. I'm not super happy with how it's come out. It has led to a change in gravity, so now he falls a lot faster, and I'm still in the process of trying to fix that. But the glide's really cool, it's something that I want to um, add in the future. And as you can see, as you get hit, you lose health, which is really cool. And it's um, enabled me to... that's something that isn't actually... I didn't actually add to the list, is that the, uh, the fruit now, you know, adds to the health bar as well. You don't have to spin attack it anymore, you just run into it and it adds to your health bar. And I think that's really cool as well. And that's pretty much all of the new features. That and, um, as you can see, the new stone blocks for the castle. Um, I don't know if this was the same as last time. I'll have to double check. But this should be new grass for you guys, where I've made it one long uninterrupted block. And I've tried to make uh, some rounded edges. And I think that makes the, the ground look a little um, smoother. I think it looks better this way than, than it did before. Um... But, you know, you, you guys let me let me know what you guys think and uh, always feel free to share your opinions and things like that on, on things that I can improve or what you think looks bad or good. Um, and yeah, here's how I did it. Here, here we go. So the first thing I did was make it so the consumable fruit that we've got in the game actually impacts the player's health behind the scenes. At this first part, we didn't have the health bar at this stage but we still needed to make it so the player got health when they picked up the fruit and also removing the fact that it took a spin attack to um, be able to pick it up. We just wanted to make it so the player could just walk onto it and it would pick it up automatically as well. And this part was actually quite easy. It wasn't actually very difficult at all. It was one of the only pleasant experiences of the entire uh, time of the rest of the game dev stuff. The new enemy, and the health bar and the gliding function I really struggled with in honesty, so this was a pleasant beginning at least. And then after that I needed something to illustrate the new enemy firing that shadow ball. So I've done a little mock-up of not the final design but a design for a moving projectile. Uh, which I thought was really fun. It's one of my favourite aspects is the little pixel drawing stuff. And it, it's, you know, uh, a way to get out of coding for longer because that's my biggest nemesis so far is the coding by a long way. But yeah, I, I quite like the look of it for, uh, you know, a little mock-up that only took like 10-15 minutes. And then after that is the long and arduous process of actually trying to code it so it would fire and it wouldn't do it. <laughs> so here's some of the footage of part of... The, the coding process for me trying to get the the shadow ball to work. Um, 
I think it was probably the second most difficult thing I had to encounter. The first, weirdly, being the health bar, which you'll see later on, I did on stream. And <laughs> I was there for two hours, so I've had to cut out most of that. <laughs> But uh, you're going to see my ugly mug a little bit later on in the video, looking horrendously perplexed. So yeah, this wasn't the hardest, but it was a close second. And I was following a YouTube tutorial for parts of this because I really got stuck and uh, couldn't find a way around it for, for the most part. So just as a little heads up for, you know, all of you fellow in aspiring game development people, all of the code that you're seeing in this video right now isn't correct. Wait until a little bit later on for the correct code, uh, because I was running around in circles and this isn't quite right, so I wouldn't copy anything that I'm, I'm typing at this very particular moment in time. A little bit later on, you'll, you'll see the, the real code and how it comes together. And even then, I wouldn't copy me, copy someone who knows what they're doing, because my code's a mess, you guys, the, the more senior game dev people and, and actual programmers can see quite clearly that it's a, it's a jumbled, a crazy man's thoughts trying to <laughs> scramble together any sense of clarity in the situation. <laughs> And that's enough about the shadow shade ball thing. Moving on to um, talking about the health bar. This is something that even though it took the longest amount of time, I know that it's actually quite a simple process to make this work in comparison, but I'm immensely proud of it because this is the first time I did it on stream. I tried as best as I could to not have any hand-holding. I was trying not to look at YouTube tutorials. I was trying my very best to not take too much advice from the people in the Twitch chat and really try and work out the logic of the code myself. So it is a bit of a turning point for me in that aspect where I am quite, yeah, quite proud of, even though it's very simple, I did do it for the most part by myself shout out to um mac and cheese in <laughs> my discord and the guy that came onto the twitch chat he did give me some really helpful pointers that probably saved me a solid hour of the of the two hour process it would have been three without him so i appreciate his help and i appreciate him not giving me the answers straight away and letting me ponder and let me work out what's going wrong and why things are going wrong as well <laughs> this segment of you watching me scratch my head and not write any code could last a very, very long time. So I am going to cut it short. Feel free to join me on the stream. It is also the Game Gateway on Twitch. I do some game development stuff. I do mainly play games on there, so don't expect game dev stuff all of the time. But I do stream there when I'm feeling brave and confident <laughs> about what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, here is me actually doing the sort of UI element of the actual health bar because I've got the coding working at this stage and that was a yeah, huge breakthrough for me there. And here's a little snippet of me deciding you know, the design elements of the game, looking at like the castle walls what I'm going to build in the future and changing the, the dirt or grass blocks colors and you know the shape and size of it a little bit as well. I did unfortunately forget to record the part where I was designing the castle walls and the stone bricks, but you know, you can use your imagination on how I drew that. I'm sure it's not a, a big loss for anyone not seeing that process. And that leads us nicely onto the thing that we can now see in the video, which is me doing the glide mechanic, which uh, was a fun little project trying to get that code to work. I also forgot to record that, so here is a, uh, a mock-up snippet of, of, you know, a fake me writing the code, because in actuality it took me hours and this snippet of code is only a couple of minutes long, and that's not how long it took me. I did also find a really cool AI coding bot called Cursor, if you guys have not seen that. I was really stuck with a certain element of making the glide work, and I just chucked my code into Cursor and was like, dude, how, why is this wrong? And it spat out a new line of code and explained to me also the reasoning why it was wrong. So if you guys are new to coding and you're the same as me, where you don't really understand the logic fully, it's a really useful tool um, to help with your broken code, I would say. So feel free to check that out, guys. Maybe I'll ch chuck that in the description. Maybe I'll forget. <laughs> but yeah, definitely, definitely want to remember. 
And that is everything. So feel free to leave a like, leave a comment uh, on what you want to maybe see next in the game, what mechanics you want to see, what you want to see me work on, and I'll endeavour to do my best to continue. Thank you very much, guys, for watching and supporting me in this process so far. You guys have been really helpful with your comments in the last video, and I super appreciate all of your help and support. Thank you guys. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.